Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm starting to enjoy basketball as well. I, I go to the games and I'm, yeah. I enjoy it now. Yeah. You know, when you're doing all that. This week's episode of Region Race will cover all the regions. I'll go through what's been going on, what's coming up, and much more. Let's start in Class 3A with the area's most competitive region. And let's start by looking forward to Saturday's showdown at Butler between Laney and Butler. Our, that's a, that, those are our area's two best teams. They've proven that game in, game out throughout the year. And the thing I like about this is regardless of what the standings say, um, you know, whether it be uh, wins and losses that were affected by GHSA rulings and things like that, I think everybody knows that, that, that this is a game that, that will decide the region's best team and the area's best team. Laney got the first one. If Butler would be able to get this one, they would have a very good argument for saying, you know, that they're right there with Laney. But that's all about pride. Laney has all but wrapped up the number one slot in the region, barring somewhat of a mir miracle if they were to lose um, three of their last four games. That, that would be the only way that they could um, not finish the region schedule in first place. But when it comes to pride and, and, and deciding things on the court, I can't wait until Saturday. It should be great. Now, since the first matchup on January 9th, Raquel Smoot has really come on for the Butler Bulldogs. He, he actually played his first excellent game, in my opinion, that day. And since then, he's had three or four just phenomenal games games so to see his impact on the game will be interesting but on the other side nobody has been better nobody has been better in January than Laney's Christian Keeling so, so so those are a couple guys who have really come on as of late but both team has many many guys who who can who can uh, make a huge difference on any given day the, the, the area's best teams meet Saturday. My advice, get there early if you want to see the action. Okay, so elsewhere in Region 3, you've got kind of a race for second, third, fourth place. Butler, despite their troubles with the GHSA, despite having to forfeit games, clawed its way back with wins versus Josie and Washington County in the last week, and they look like they may have uh, maybe not wrapped up but maybe in position to wrap up the second place uh, uh, slot in that region and then it becomes a race for third because nobody in my opinion wants to be fourth and face Laney in the second round of the region tournament so and what Washington County did they bounced back I've talked about how Butler bounced back um, from adversity well one of my favorite players, Washington County's A.J. Gray, had a chance to win that game against Butler, and he got called for a charge on a basket that he made, and um, it was a great job by Jalen Archie from Butler to take that charge, and, and, and so, so Butler took that win. Well, just three nights later, no, I'm sorry, uh, five days later, uh, A.J. Made a shot to beat Josie in the final second, so it's great to see him bounce back. It's great to see Washington County bounce back, and they look poised now to take that third slot. And barring you know a real big uh, push by Josie and some luck, um, you know on their part for, by getting wins and losses to fall their way elsewhere in the region, looks like Josie is poised to take that fourth slot. Now, um, as far as Region Three and, and games that can affect these standings and, and, and who falls where. Um, this Friday you've got Josie versus Glen Hills. This Saturday you've got Washington County versus Glen Hills. And next week you have Josie and Laney playing and uh, Washington County and Laney playing. And I've already talked about Laney Butler Saturday. So that's kind of what's up in Region 3. Now, moving to Region 2, Harlem. I wrote on my blog last week how I was wrong about Harlem. I looked at road losses to Dublin and Swainsboro, and I concluded and wrote about on my blog at the beginning of the month 
my belief that maybe Harlem wasn't as for real as I thought they were. Well, I spoke too soon. I spoke without knowledge. I have seen them look dominating against Swainsboro and Dublin here this past week at home. And um, so now Harlem is second in the region. And if they can get a Dublin win at home versus Swainsboro this Saturday, they will be tied for first in the region. And then there'll be a tiebreaker and one of those teams will get the buy in the state tournament play. More importantly, in my opinion, Harlem is poised to win its region tournament, which uh, begins February 10th, ends February 13th. Based on what I've seen them in them in their games versus Dublin and Swainsboro, they are poised to win that tournament. They have in Reggie Reed and Torian Beard. They have athletic guards who can get to the rim at will, and who are both extremely unselfish. Steven St. Clair, a sophomore, stretches the court and makes shots. And he, he's also looks to be a very smart player. And then, uh, and then to add to that, Rayshawn Morris slashes, gets to the basket, and finishes as well. That team, I think, is going to go deep in the AA playoffs. They have advantages that most teams, if not all teams, do not have when it comes to that athleticism and that ability to get to the rim. And a player like Reggie Reed in AA basketball is only going to come around so much and uh, so often. And, and this is a special year for senior Reggie Reed, senior Torian Beard, and the Harlem Bulldogs. Now, going to Region 1, Aquinas, 5-2 um, and two in region play, second place, um, has, has a tiebreaker edge over Georgia Military, but they go to Georgia Military, to Milledgeville, Friday. And um, so that game is very important. They can lock up number two in the region, or they could uh, they, they could go to um, they could go to number uh, they could go behind uh, Georgia Military with a loss. So we'll be looking out for that. I saw Aquinas beat Glen Hill Saturday. San Antonio Brinson. I've written about him. I've featured him. He is very impressive. Um, somebody says he's six foot eight. I, I can never see how tall guys are by just looking at them. But, it, it, but, but if he is six foot eight with the skill set that he has, I have no doubt that he's a major college basketball player. And um, you know those those guys only come around so often. He's a great kid, and I root for him every time he's on the court because because of the way he carries himself. And, and, and just everything about him. Now, also Cam Gordon, who uh, Saturday made the game-winning shot and really stepped up and made a lot, a, a lot of winning plays that day. Um, his emergence, his uh, stepping into a, a little bit of a bigger role, I think is important. And I'll look to see how that goes throughout the postseason. Another player that I look to make a big difference there is Jalen Holbrook. So Aquinas, their biggest game yet this regular season, in my opinion, is Friday versus Georgia Military. So we'll, I'll be looking out to see how that one goes. Um, Region 5 or Class 5A, um, Grovetown has run away and hidden from the pack at 7-1 and one with two region games remaining. Uh, barring uh, uh, two losses, uh, the Grovetown will, will uh, win that region outright. The, the thing about that region is they go into sub, the, the, the teams that we follow are part of a sub region, so then they will go into a region tournament with some very good teams from outside of our area. So we will see how our area's re, uh, Class 5A teams f fare against the other area's Class 5A teams in the region tournament. Augusta Christian, South Carolina Independent School, um, defending state champions, I've, I've added them to my coverage list, and, and the Lions lost in anticlimactic fashion to Hammond Friday. Hammond, um, you know, a kind of a noteworthy team having 7th Woods and a, a guy named Xavier McDaniel, who are pretty high-profile guys, um, beat uh, Augusta Christian on kind of a fluke play 
tie game, last possession. There's a foul 60 feet away from the basket. Seventh Woods makes two free throws to win that game. That comes on the heels of a uh, somewhat of a collapse from Augusta Christian against Cardinal Newman days earlier uh, at home, region opponent, uh, leading by seven with a minute to go, and, and the uh, the Lions uh, gave up uh, gave up that lead and lost that game. So the reason that's important is because Friday night Augusta Christian travels to Cardinal Newman to try to get back on track and, and when it comes to region play, and I have every bit of confidence that they will um, for many reasons but two very strong reasons are an inside outside combo of underclassmen and that's at the guard you have Madison Williams a junior and down in the post you have Isaiah Kelly a freshman and these two guys are as talented as they come and and they have and we'll be seeing them for a long time around town and uh, Madison had 20 points against uh, Hammond. He was very impressive. Isaiah um, played very well Tuesday in a non-region matchup against Alleluia. Those two guys are very impressive. We're going to see a lot of them. Um, Isaiah, in particular, just has upside. Um, when, you know, just through the roof. And so we're going to we're going to see him making a difference on the basketball court in our town for four years. And and I've been uh, enjoying seeing him and Madison and, and the rest of the Lions play um, this past week. Now, speaking of younger guys that, 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 that can play, um, you know, I, I featured a couple times this past week, Alleluia. Alleluia got beat by Augusta Christian um, Tuesday, got down early and, and threatened a couple times, came back, cut it to 10 a couple times, but never really was uh, was it made a, a real run at the lead. But that doesn't mean these guys can't play. They went to Faith Baptist last Saturday, played a team that is um, consistently one of the best independent school teams in the Southeast, won uh, 90 to 81. Alleluia made uh, 15 three-pointers. Um, uh, so I'll close out with just a little bit of Alleluia. I call them the most skilled team in our area. So I'll leave, um, I'll leave the show with a few uh, before we wrap up with credits and stuff with a few of these little plays. You have Mac McBride um, with, with a crossover and a three-pointer here. You have Ben Dresser making shots from the parking lot. You have uh, uh, six foot three Hayden Hebert, who's right-handed, um, working with his left hand and, and doing some impressive things with the ball there. And then Stephen Mulligan, who has a knack for making nifty little right hand, left-handed shots around the rim. Uh, uh, and, and so th those are some guys that I really like, and I haven't seen them for about a month, so I wanted to end the show with them. And uh, I can't wait for, for the next couple weeks of action, getting into the postseason. Thank you, everybody, for checking out the show. Thank you for checking out the blog. I will see you in the gym.